It was just for me. Wow, yeah. All right. Uh oh, whoa, there we go. <laughs> Yeah. Any other announcements, discussion before we try to get going in like, you know, like five minutes, shall we say? It'll be like seven o'clock. Yeah, we're right away. Uh, uh, Chuck has a video about Tim and Christopher that's 35 minutes, so we want to start that by like 8.20 at the latest, I think. So I think that that would be cool. We could maybe have a temperature check about doing that. But I think it'd be great to watch in there. No, it was fun like the last time. Yeah, and this is, a, this is 20 minutes shorter, so we'll move right along. We'll have a potty break cool. before the movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Yeah, so yeah. And for those of us that are new here, we basically run down announcements, uh, report back uh, discussion, and we're going to try to do a 30, 35 minute video, maybe probably. So if anybody has any stuff to add. <laughs> so, we got new cooks. New cooks. Yep. Yeah. Kind of a casual announcement. But there's new cooks in town. Mm -hmm. So. How about three cheers for the cooks? Yeah. Hip hip hooray! Yeah. Hip hip hooray! Yeah. Hip hip hooray! Yeah. We need to discuss uh, meal making or anything, or just meant like. Yeah, we'll put it down for a casual discussion. Okay. I don't want to do. I don't want to go too long. All right. That's what I like to do. <laughs> Keep Gary and I. Yeah. And also, I got the March Against Monsanto thing before back there as well. That was very successful. Yeah. Right. We start in like, yeah, a couple minutes. I'm good. Made it too strong since so I. Does anybody want to good. facilitate? Oh, you did. What? 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 It's a personal plug <laughs> for my daughter, but it's good. It's pretty easy to predict that, Dan. I'm sorry. And I'm trying to go with <laughs> the air conditioner. This More of the same. Yeah. We're not going to give you a weatherman of the week. <laughs> no. That's true. But I'm just giving you a hard time. I was thinking, well, when hasn't it going to be ready? Really? A few days. I thought it was awfully humid out there. That's the bad thing about rain and then the sunshine because it's, oh, God, it reminds me of New Orleans. I, I in our underwater. conversation, I wanted to mention something. Mm -hmm. I was reading a short article about uh, Michelle Obama's garden. You know how it was publicized originally as an organic garden? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a word about that part, just mm -hmm. her vegetable garden. <laughs> I don't know if that's mm -hmm. deliberate, but I suspect it is. Mm -hmm. With, uh, um, because she got so much flack about having an organic garden. Oh, well. Yeah. And her yeah. husband uh, signing yeah. off on the electronics this um, Monsanto can get away with murder and it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, just watch out which way the wind is blowing, Michelle, because that organic shit overlaps. That inorganic stuff, you know, manages to get the problem. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, well, I just found some wheat or something in Oregon. Did you hear about that? Wow. It's just hit the news, I think, today. About, yeah, there's like non approved GMO wheat out in some field. Oh, Christ. Another weird strain on the loop. So the wheat will kill a kid by age five, <laughs> according to studies in New Zealand. Wow. Sure. Yeah. Well, that's not safe at all. It'll kill an adult, but it takes longer. With the governor's mm -hmm. tax. You know, uh, it kills liver cells. The way it does is it has some. It specifically switches off. DNA and screws up the production of enzymes. Wow. And this is what? And I've heard other stuff, bad stuff recently too, at the March. 
Yeah. Hey, you know, you look at it this way, you guys. What doesn't kill us will make us stronger. Or weirder. <laughs> Only kidding. But we have so many things to be afraid of. I know. I know. Yeah, it's insane. What I want to know is, what you know, what, why are these people so disconnected from their own grandkids or even their own kids? I'm sure they can make sure they don't do that stuff. They're reptiles. There are reptiles, did you say? Yeah, they don't consider themselves. But, but reptiles will not live either. And besides that, let's not insult reptiles. Oh, I right. would I rather have hang out. I would rather have a snake for I mean, a president than... Do you know about the theory that there's shape-changing reptiles from another planet? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. And every time I look at some of them, I think, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I actually know somebody who I, I think believes that. Well, it's a terrible thought to have planted in your mind, and I yeah. almost wish I'd yeah. never read about it. Right. Then you start, yeah. then you start yeah. looking, right? Speaks with forked tongue. <laughs> That's a lot. Of, there's a lot of that going on. Well, I'm just going to be turning to soil and green. Yeah, they don't have fires, so You're what? I'm just going to be turning into soil and green, so I don't care. Yeah. The military is on our side right now. I mean, according to the, 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 according to the timeline of that movie, <laughs> Soil and Green, like I will be pretty old by then. Yeah. That's yeah. what <laughs> they'll do. They'll strip me out. I just, you know, <laughs> I know the plan will probably recover, but you know what? There's going to be a hell of a lot of misery. And, and, it's, and it's all about greed. It doesn't yeah. have to happen. It's all about, it's, it's about, it's about manipulating people in society. You know, but it's you have about the slave about, groups. You have like the people who are like you know just above them that think that they're you know their shit doesn't smell, and then you got the super super rich. Those are the only three classes you have. You know, third world countries, middle class, you know bullshit. And I think the United States is going to the way to Okay. All right. Calcium. Okay. Uh, one day. One day. What happened to Loki? I don't know. We do appreciate the Loki stack so much. Oh, we go way back. What can I say? Uh, yeah, no. Um, but anyway, all right. Well, then just uh, maybe we'll try to like go around. Then, if nobody wants to take a stack, we'll just keep it rolling in circles. So basically, I want to thank everybody for coming down tonight. This is the Occupy Minneapolis weekly, uh, you know, potluck and all for the open meeting. Everyone's invited. We got lovely free food here. We have. Probably the best place to start is we have new cooks that are doing a killer job. Yes. <laughs> so far. Cooks, stand up. Cooks, stand up. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy, <laughs> Hollander. <laughs> it was actually, there was actually two other people that helped us tonight. Mary, uh, Mary Lynch basically made the macaroni and cheese, and Lion made the salad. And some so. brought in the pies and stuff. Yep, and then of course Kathy. desserts. And the fruit. It always helps. And the fruit. Susie. Gotta have dessert. It's the law. Lovely grapes. Lovely grapes are fantastic. So beautiful. It was an easy thing to put together. If you're feeling adventurous, I needed today, and I got Japanese nappy, which is kind of like a rhubarb substitute. Oh, okay. So, mm -hmm. Very cool. Oh, great. Nice. All right. Yeah, Polly's not here tonight, so she's not feeling well. Everybody is sick right now. But we're recording, so. Um, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll take it back up notes. Okay. Especially if you're, especially if you're recording and I can get at it. Oh. Yes. We have the live stream rolling that is archived at livestream.com slash occupymn that is licensed to the commons that has no copyrights. Uh, so anyway, um, basically here this is a basically a discussion group. We do not have to take decisions, although sometimes we have temperature checks where it's like, I really agree with this. Mm, maybe not. No. And then sometimes I feel like something is veering off from like an announcement into like a discussion. We call it, we say, people may say point of process. We just try to respect that. We're going to discuss stuff, we'll move it into discussion. Now, time wise, the one thing is that we really wanted to consider watching a video about Tim De Christopher that Chuck uh, courteously has brought in for tonight, and the uh, predictor stuff is already set up. So I was thinking that if we could have a goal of uh, by 8.20 or so, maybe being able to take a five minute break and then like watch the video, and then we won't run, run too late up to nine. How do people feel about that? If you like it, you can twinkle your fingers. If you don't, know, you like this. 
Alright, I think we're feeling pretty good. So we'll try to like do that stuff by 820. Alright, that's great. So let's go to announcements. And so the first thing up is Jamie Kelly's uh, court date, which I believe is tomorrow bright early in the morning. Do you want to <coughs> lay it down for us, please? Yes, this is, I, I am not having an eviction court date. I don't expect to be evicted, but I mean, I'm staying in my home of 30 years. But it's 8, we're gathering at 8 a.m. at the Lincoln Center um, by the indoor fountain in case it rains. And the actual time is supposedly 8.45. I was told by somebody that means you'll get in at 9. I don't know, but anyway, we're gathering a large group to show support and solidarity against Freddie Mac. Thank you. Are there any carpools available down there? Because parking is really exorbitant in the neighborhood. Um, I know my neighbors are carpooling. I don't. I don't know okay. if there's an organized one. I, I think it's um, you check with Occupy. Okay. There's, cool. there's a lot of Fourth Street and Fifth that mm -hmm. you use sometimes for the Metrodome. Mm -hmm. But if it's not, it's five dollars for the day. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. That's good to know. All right. Um, so we have the, the rally about the parents uh, and the you know for more police violence. That's on Friday. Do you wanna yeah. Um, I think you've all heard about the case of Terrence Franklin, who was murdered by the Minneapolis police in the basement mm -hmm. of the house. And uh, also, though, the rally is about his case. We're of course in touch with the people, um, the friends and family of Ivan Romero as well. The fellow was killed on the motorcyclist by the cops who were responding 35 minutes later. Uh, I won't say too much about the case, um, but it's crap what they're so telling us, and it's a full, full cover-up sort of thing. So people are organizing around that, particularly friends and family, well, mostly friends of Terrence Franklin. And the first thing is going to be a rally this Friday, 5.30 at the Hennepin well, People's <laughs> Plaza. That's how we know it. People's yeah. Plaza, there you go. right by the LRT. It's still People's Plaza, goddammit. And we're going to take it over, and there's going to be a rally there, and then probably starting around 6 of March through downtown, uh, um, make it known how people feel. And we really need to get a lot of people out for this, so I'd strongly encourage people to do that. There's a website which is just forming called Justice for Franklin, Ter uh, Terrence Franklin, um, dot, uh, WordPress com, and there's a Facebook page which you can look up, Justice for Terrence Franklin, as well, and an event page. So. Um, those are places to get some information. Um, other things uh, related to it, uh, police things. Some of you know about uh, CUAPB and the Committee for Professional Policing and the uh, petitioning we've been doing to get on the ballot for uh, professional insurance for police. Um, we've hit a bit of a glitch um, based on um, something to do with the city is uh, planning to change the entire charter so that the charter we amend will be thrown out one year later. So we may have a problem with that. We'll be going ahead soon. That's why we don't have petitions here tonight. But watch for that. The, the concept's still going to go ahead. And finally, if I have the floor, bake, bake sale right here this Saturday. Every group in the building is going to have a bake sale. And of course, they'll be selling their t-shirts and all that stuff too. And um, they, uh, so that's five different groups that are in here. And uh, yeah, um, so, oh yeah, as she was saying, if you're going to the websites, it's spelled Terrence, T-E-R-R-A-N-C-E. -E. Even the Star Tribune has gotten it wrong in their articles and used it one way or the other. So we're trying to get it right. Um, but anyway, the bake sale, yeah, so five groups are gonna be here. They'll have other stuff in their flyers and be trying to recruit people and all that kind of stuff too, but it'll be right in this room. It's a great place to get together and see all the stuff that's going on as well, and we're going to fly her in the neighborhood. <coughs> yes? Just, uh, if I may, add a related yeah. item. Uh, about four years ago, there was a guy at the YMCA that mm -hmm. the police tasered, and then they sat on his back, oh, and he died. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> good, that's bad. The good news is, in the courts, and the family got an award of several million dollars. Second largest. It's one of the sick, yeah, one of the largest awards. That's okay. Mm -hmm. hmm? Smith? David Smith? Yeah, David no. Smith, yes. Three yeah. million. Yeah. There was another $400,000 settlement just this past month as well in a case where they shot two dogs right in the presence of a three-year-old yes, who had to today. continue sitting there with the dog next to her. 
while they, you know, searched the house for the SWAT team and all that. It was really awful. So it's a, it's a lot more. Oh well, they just shot two dogs. So is that, yeah. that was another. Um, I'm not sure where, where it was. Probably. Um, but anyway, yeah. So the city keeps racking up these settlements, and the police keep misbehaving, to put it mildly. So we got to do something, and this rally is a good place to start. Yeah. Uh, I should mention too. The last couple of weeks, Bob Carney's been talking a lot about the stoplight that the motorcyclist was oh, killed yes, by right. the police at, and how the city of Minneapolis blows money on a lot of things, but making the stoplights have warning lights and yeah. switch. Emergency vehicles is not one. Though. No. Um, all right. So let's uh, go to the yeah, ASAP uh, resolution and that stuff. Yeah. June 1st. Oh, bake sale. I'm sorry. June 1st, this Saturday, noon till 4. And um, CUAPB is also hosting a potluck dinner after that. So, um, kind of like this. So, if you like this, come. Maybe I'll make come. some slutty bread for that. Yeah. <laughs> is the bake sale to, to uh, help the individual groups or is it it's, to help the building or it's, what is it for it's, it's for the individual groups, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll break something myself. <laughs> Break. Bake, I meant bake. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Break bread. Okay. Um, the ASAP. Yeah, I, I didn't come here intending to talk about my job, but I work for the Minnesota Arms Spending Alternatives Project, which is kind of like Jobs Not War or any of those kind of groups. Um, we passed over 100, re uh, this resolution that calls for a reduction and redirection of military spending uh, from war to meeting essential needs in our communities. As you can tell, I'm just parroting this stuff off right now. Um, we passed our resolution in 100 churches, nonprofits, peace groups, uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Duluth City Council. Now we're approaching the Ramsey and Hennepin County boards. We're almost there in both of those counties. Uh, we've got, we're basically on the verge of getting on the agenda in both. We've got yes, commit votes from uh, all but one in both. So. You want to call them if you support that kind of a thing. Um, counties are being slashed; their budgets are being slashed while we spend trillions of dollars on the cost of war. Um, same, same is true with the city council budgets are being slashed, and that translates into cuts to actually money that prevents foreclosures, uh, home energy efficiency money. Uh, just human needs are being slashed while we spend trillions on war. So. Mm -hmm. The website is minasap.org if you're interested. How do you spell that? Yeah. M-N-A-S-A-P dot O-R-G. Excellent. Um, I just wanted to tag on to that quick, and I asked Nathan to mention this. I think it's important, but also we have a different little project going. Our buddy Sam Richards set up an anti-drone petition that's been online for about a good month or so, and it's got, it's getting up near around a thousand signers, so it's actually moving along pretty nicely. And um, I think around June 5th or 6th, the uh, that's supposed to get um, brought down to the county board. So that's coming right up, I guess, within the next little over a week, although I don't have the exact time. But anyway, so that, that petition's on change.org, and uh, we've been passing it around. So, um, and, and, and they just, you know, been promoting a drone industry now in like Port Ripley and stuff. So Sam started this petition, and then a huge drone marketing campaign started in Minnesota. So it's really key to get these things in there before they start the marketing campaigns for flying freaking robots. Anyway, um, all right. So uh, we also, um, really quick, I just I wanted to mention very fast, like uh, June 1st um, is like a kind of a day of global action going on in different places. People are trying to re <coughs> reoccupy Zuccotti Park in New York City, which is cool. It's sort of a random crew of people working on that, so that's underway. And also in Europe, there's supposed to be actions in like, I don't know, some hundreds of cities against the Troika and the general sort of EU austerity budget insanity. So it's been on June 1st, and I think Troika is a hashtag, T-R-O-I-A-A. -A. So, so that's going on. Um, and uh, um, there's also, like, I think C-Tool has a, a, a rally on June 1st as well. I don't have, does anyone know the info on that? Like, uh, isn't it, or, I don't know. Uh, there, there's there's some kind of rally like down on Lake Street on June first. Oh. I posted it online a couple days ago. But I'm Lake and where? Um, yeah. Over around Bloomington, maybe. Um, maybe. Because they hold one like there's one that they hold every year on Lake and Bloomington around okay. this time. Yeah, I know it's on the first though. Yeah. I just I just looked at it. I posted it earlier. But anyway. Um, What's the issue? Uh, I think it's uh, immig immigrant rights. Um, yeah, it's illegal or what? Yeah. Immigration issues and stuff like that, and I've been down there several times 
around this time. Cool. Yeah. So um, it's in the early afternoon, I believe. I think they start right around noon. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. And then uh, maybe Susie, if you want to. Oh, uh, this was just a personal plug. My daughter uh, filmed the infamous T is showing at the Out Pride Film Festival, St. Anthony, Maine, tomorrow night, 6.40 p.m. And it's really great, and even though I'm her mom. <laughs> and it's all about, it takes place here in, in Minneapolis. And then uh, as an aside, I just read an article saying, oh, this uh, business group around drones is uh, doing a promotion campaign because of the bad rap they're getting. Everybody get out their hanky. But they're feeling the pressure, so that's good. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Cool. Does anyone have any other announcements of green and stuff coming up in the next week or so? Yes. It's not in the next week. I've been doing some research. I don't know if you guys think this is nuts or not, but... Supposedly, over 27 states have declared sovereignty from the corporate federal government, and that gave the military a chance to tell the corporate federal government they are no longer supporting them. And there have been 1,400 resignations, arrests, and people disappearing in the United States and in Europe in major corporate positions and banks. And it's only the beginning, and the message is if you see the military and the police going around arresting people, it's not us. And they're going to put those people in their own camps. And there will be five days of uh, informational videos, supposedly, and it um, could be good. 5,000 suppressed patents will be released. That's, I, I know it sounds crazy, and, but that's, I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. I've heard about this one too. Stranger things have happened. So, in American history, definitely. Nothing bigger than this, though. <coughs> the dawn of the golden age. Uh, uh, yeah. In other words, what he's saying is they're turning it around and we're starting to win. Right when we meet. And that's at 2511 yeah. East Franklin. I think it's a Lutheran church or something like that. Yeah, sure. um, Where is the tools office? Uh, hmm? Where is the tools office? It, it's where their offices are. So. Oh, we yeah. Think it's Bethany. Um, they have, they're going to have a gala and a silent auction on July 19th. Uh, and there are a couple other things you can read that so I did pass um, get around but they, they've been active this is the second year they've been active um, and then so I think that's the thing I was talking about and, and we've seen more strikes in, in uh, stuff like fast food spreading in like places like Milwaukee too so I think people are finally organizing in these areas it's great um, all right, so for report bags, we had two items posted. Uh, March against, unless anyone had also had an announcement. March against Monsanto was this weekend. That was very successful. And then also Chuck was going to give us a kind of a quick rundown of the legislature. So was anybody at the March against Monsanto that could talk a little bit about that? Okay. Anyone? You want to? I was there, but yeah, it was really successful. It seemed like there were several thousand people there. I think it was one of the biggest marches I've seen in a long time. People were generally uh, 
really happy about everything. There was a few drivers that were kind of mad, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we took care of them pretty well. But uh, I actually saw a cop beat him on a, a hood of a car that the guy tried to run the cop over, in, which was kind of interesting. And, uh, <laughs> They got pretty bad, but uh, in general, I think the event went pretty well. Everything was peaceful as soon as we were back at the Capitol, and, and there was a lot of really good speakers and groups that were there handing out literature and things about uh, just different uh, farming practices and trying to get back to like real healthy agriculture instead of uh, ranking seeds in Monsanto. Yeah, and a lot of different groups of people too. Like right. Real wide gathering. It, yeah, it was just a really, really diverse <coughs> crowd there, and. Uh, it, it, one thing I noticed that was really interesting is like when everyone was gathered on the Capitol, like there was there was like zero police presence there because they figured like these people are really peaceful. Like, there's no need for us to waste these tax dollars on trying to monitor these people that aren't going to do anything wrong anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And I um, got flyers out about Enbridge uh, to all the people that were filling out postcards in line up against uh, Monsanto and. People were very receptive and had not heard about it for the most part. Awesome. That's great. I think it shows there's a lot of interest out there that people want to do that. And uh, I would just add real quick, too, like, it was really blacked out as media. It reminded me of how Occupy was really blacked out as media in the very early days. Now they don't like to acknowledge this stuff. And so a lot of people organized online to pressure local news outlets to run coverage on it because they didn't want to. So that actually worked in a lot of cases. So and they did. Yeah, they, like, CNN, they were able to get yeah. something up on CNN and stuff like that. So it, it, uh, it took a lot of effort because it was really blacked out. So um, that was, I think, something we're going to have to keep doing for everything. Um, all right, Finn, is that everything for the Monsanto March? Are there any next well, steps for related yeah. groups that we should mention right now? Yes. Um, there's the, the news I saw of 2 million people in 52 countries and over 435 cities. That's practically spontaneous, and yeah. that's showing globally people that are acting as a global community. Yeah. And um, if you guys haven't seen it yet, um, genetic roulette, the gamble of our lives, three weeks ago, and I thought I knew GMO was bad. <laughs> no, nothing. It's way bad. And I, anybody can get it, it's free. I got copied, you know, I got it on my computer, but so you can find it on BitTorrent pretty easy. Genetic roulette. Type in the gamble of our lives. It's very informative and it's very scary. Maybe we should watch that down here. Let's do yeah, and then we should. Um, I just wanted to throw out that ahead of time, our march here was estimated to have 2,000 people and covered at a pretty good time of the march and came up with 2,500. And the atmosphere was so peaceful. Everybody could get their trash and nobody squawked. And I mean, you're setting up really that state employee came by. A lot of people were talking about doing it again in the fall. Totally. We've got to stay on that. That we don't. I'm sorry, Congress stepped in and said that states can't set up. That's what Steve King was kind of, Michelle Bachman's counterpart in Iowa. That's not going to, the states are, are seceding from the corporate government. Well, this is a good example of why people would want to do such a thing, isn't it? <laughs> what kind of label do you want to All right, um, and with that particular lead in, actually, I think uh, we should probably go, unless anybody else had anything, we should go to Chuck about the other stuff with the legislature. Oh, this is short, and I'm going to be disappointed. Anyway, uh, a key thing that passed was all citizens can marry. Uh, yeah. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo, yeah. Um, <coughs> there was an energy vote that will require the utilities to go 1.5% uh, to solar, and that's just a start. So it gets them having work on that. Uh, 
this is all state. I'm only talking about state. Uh, that welfare grant thing uh, to raise the welfare grant, that passed, but it doesn't take effect for a year or something. Uh, what percentage? Like, it's on the next budget. What percentage? I don't know the, all the details, but anyway, I was... So that's, that's big, like people were pushing that for the welfare, right? Yeah, so at least we got a vote on it. Yeah. And the other thing is that uh, the uh, homeowners bill of rights, um, that passed in the Senate with one dissenting vote, and in the House with no dissenting votes. So, and that, that's a big... Re-election. That's a big deal. <laughs> what? What? That's re-elections for you. It's like yeah. when it's a midterm, it's like that's what they do. Well, They anyway, run to basically help all the little Anyway, people. whether it would be cynical or not, it, it, it is that, that was an important thing to pass. Anybody else? Uh, Beware of these slight enforcements because the year might come up and then all of a sudden, at the last second, they'll look it down. I've seen that happen in a lot of good wins. <clears throat> the only thing that I would add legislative wise is that we beat Michelle Bachman. She's no longer running for yeah. her yeah, fifth yeah. terms. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a win. Woo! She got the hint. Ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> she might want to run for something else. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. I've been hearing that she might actually run for the governorship next year, and I'm like, really? <laughs> Wait, wait a minute, you guys. What about Rich Stanick? Apparently, Rich Stanick wants to run. I'm O M G. Somebody will kill that person. What's he gonna run for? Governor, Governor. maybe. Can you believe this? Can you believe the ego of it? Of course, it yeah. really does. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's about, the ego. Anyway, how about Walker and Walker? I think there's more than just the legislature. There is the political deal going on. Can you raise their hand? Just right here, right? Yeah, I think we're going to have to do people have any ideas about what they might want to do to deal with like the legislature next year? We also there's an open Facebook group called Occupy the Capital, which was started initially around that idea. Um, so that is out there, and people can just join up on that. Um, yeah. We got a senator in the state house that's uh, willing to sponsor a bill to rescind the fluoridation of all things. It turns out fluoridation was a way of uh, covering up a big fluoride spill. In New Jersey, back in World War II, when they were using it for making uh, nuclear material for bombs, but they knew that they were going to have this huge class action lawsuit from Southern Jersey. So what they did was they found this old study about how some guy was kind of trying to figure out why people's teeth were modeled, and it has to do with fluoride. So they twisted his words all around and said, "Oh, it's good for your teeth." Well, what they really meant was he found out that people that had too much fluoride ended up with no cavities because they ended up with no teeth. <laughs> and as a result, there's a correlation that's there. how fluoridation got started. <laughs> so it's time we got rid of it. So I'm a victim of fluoridation. <laughs> Portland just voted down fluoride, actually. The whole city just went, no, so, we're done. So, so the motto is, Sequester fluoridation. We'll just cram it in GMO foods anyway. Next will be a bill passed in Congress saying they can't ban fluoridation. Unless it's like an actual topical application on your teeth, it doesn't do anything. And there's studies that say too much fluoride actually is used to make the population dumb and docile. And that's a study that came up with more and more It was actually used in the Russian, the Soviet, and the uh, German prisoner of war camps because they cut the guard staff to one fourth. And um, the way that it works is it's basically a slow burn chemical lobotomy on your frontal lobe, but it calcifies the pineal gland, which if you guys know anything about that, that's a big deal. Well, so, different topic or same topic? Um, just the political scene in general. Before we get into like the discussion one, um, we still got a pretty good amount of time, so yeah. I think in terms of the legislature, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up on sulfide mining. Mm. 
otherwise known as copper nickel mining. I'm from northern Minnesota, as I mentioned in the past, and uh, this issue is really important, and this, this type of mining has never been done safely. It always pollutes the water. There's a lot of Demo there's a lot of Democrats getting let off the hook on this, like Representative Jace, uh, uh, Representative Metza up there. He's a young guy. Um, Carly Moline is, you know, all these all these Democrats are just ramming this thing through because they're uh, they're all tied up with the unions. The unions are in on it, working with the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> um, Anyway, it's really important. There's going to be some legislation coming up next session, and I think uh, I think it's important to get on that. We've been fighting that since the '60s. Have you? Minnesota mm -hmm. Rovers Outing Club had a big demonstration up there, and the media made a big deal. Who are they demonstrating for? The polar bears? Was that on? <laughs> that probably wasn't that copper was nickel, nickel mining, nickel mining. <coughs> was it? Yeah. So you wow. beat it then. We beat it because it's and never happened they, here. We figured eventually they'd bring it back, and here it is. Yeah. Do we need 60 hippies? 60s hippies. Yeah. Yeah. There's, nothing, there's nothing bigger and meaner than 60s hippies. Damn straight. I beg your pardon. My mother, my mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just uh, more than a little concerned about um, the candidates we have here running for. Uh, well, city council and mayor, and it's almost unbelievable. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Mark Andrew, uh, yeah. but he's a guy who pushed for stadiums. He um, pushed the Herc uh, burner and wants more burning to go on down, you know, on downtown. Um, he uh, supposedly greened up the uh, the Twin Stadium by having a water purification uh, system installed but only in the uh, in the suites where the you know the money people go um, in the team uh, locker rooms or whatever and where was the other one I forget but but not for not for the not for the folks who are going there and attending it so you know so when you leave you know the public leaves they just take their plastic water bottle and throw it into the Herc burner. Yeah. It's an instant recycling into your lungs. You know, I mean, this guy has the nerve to be running for mayor, and I just think an awful lot of people don't know what's going on, and we need to research these people and get it out there. Yeah. Yeah. And there's um, there's mayoral debates coming up too, as well. I know there's a couple coming right up, and that guy Doug Mann running for the Green Party, he was here. He's not in those debates. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I just think, I mean, there are so many races locally here. This is a great time to get our issues out, see, you know, whatever the issue may be, see which candidates will support them, raise those questions at these debates. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities here for the local issues. It's a time when at least people are paying attention to local issues. Not that the election is going to have much effect, but the campaigns can actually have a lot more effect. So. Uh, I just wonder if there's anybody who feels strongly in favor of a mayoral candidate here in Minneapolis. I'd say we run a satire one, one that looks worse than Mark Andrew. Uh, I mean, I know delegates, so oh, I, I would like to know if there's a good candidate that, you know, that I could... So far, all I've been hearing this year, excuse me, I'm just saying, all I've been hearing this year is like just pretty much the same old, same old DFLers. Yeah. Here's the thing. We have had people come here uh, Bob Carney is one yeah. who's done a lot of research on, on transportation. Whether you agree with him or not, he does, he has really thought about it, 
and has a real plan with dollars and cents. I mean, the guy is very well researched. You don't hear that from, mm -hmm. oh, say Gary Schiff, Betsy Hodges. It's no, all these good, good, Mark Andrew, all these generalities about, I have a vision for the city, and I'm going, you have a vision. What about the vision of the people? You know, and <coughs> so uh, Doug Mann, very smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, you right. know, he knows, he's, he's very sincere. Yeah. He wants to, he wants true uh, racial equality in the city. Um, uh, John right? Charles Wilson. Right. Another guy who, who uh, has a, a lot of good ideas. He, he had a, a, a thing going on the Minneapolis Issues list about the Portland Loos. In, in other words, having th the idea of having public bathrooms downtown. Mm. You know, I, so we have, we have, you know, we have some people <laughs> with some real ideas. Mm. And it is not Gary not Schiff, um, Betsy That's Hodges, nice. Don Samuels. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, you know, these people are, are bankrupt morally and Idea-wise, I don't know that he's running for this, but yeah, well, no, but somebody could yeah. One he's the fluoride so guy too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the point. I'm sorry. The point is, is that it just seems like there's a mediocre choice involved oh, this God. year, and I haven't seen anything that 100% of anybody would want to back it. You know, enough to basically beat the likes of someone like Mark Andrew. I've met Mark Andrew. He's like one of the sleaziest people I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's saying yeah, something because I've met a lot of them. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Yeah. Uh, he tops the sleazy um, Just on, on kind of the topic you were talking about, like uh, with uh, some of these uh, <laughs> not the main party candidates being but, involved in the debates, maybe we could do something where I don't know if we have a, a question to like pose or like a series of questions to pose to candidates or maybe host our own debate. So we invite fans to come down and live stream yeah. it. So that's that, a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Involved and maybe educate people about other candidates that aren't in these two mainstream parties that make up the business party in the United States. That's a really good idea. Can we maybe yeah. get a temperature check about how people feel about the idea of maybe having a, a debate? Uh, at a Wednesday night meeting, how do people feel about that? Yeah. Yes, if so. No, we can do that. No. Definitely. Yes. Okay, well, that seems really positive. Um, we should maybe try to figure out a date or something. It probably wouldn't be too complicated to actually put on. Or something like yeah, yeah, and do you seriously think Mark Andrews is going to show up? Um, it, who knows, right? Sorry, what's that? If we have time, maybe do a discussion later about it. And yeah, see if are yeah, let's, um, let, we'll, yeah let's, let's take that to the discussion. All right, so um, with that, um, oh, also, I. I almost forgot, this is semi-political. There's something called a civic hacking event this weekend. It's sort of like where they get people, like computer developers and people that work in different agencies and stuff together to try to develop like mobile apps from government data and stuff like that over the weekend. So like looking at what kind of data the government actually publishes and how to make it available to people. So that's going on this weekend. Um, I could give you more info on that. I'm gonna maybe try to swing by and check it out if I can. Mary so, has something to add. Is that to you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know that we'll elect who we want, but in my mind it seems as if we need to have a way to work around them and to be like have some sort of force yeah. that when the government screws up royally, mm -hmm. there's some accountability. I know it's the same issue with police. Yeah, I just, sure I just think the city goes haywire on, well, now we're going to charge you this and this. Now you can't walk on the street. Do you know I was at the bus going to the north side on 7th and Nicollet? Some kid in one of those, Dink or whatever they are, <laughs> walked up to me and said, you know, you could get a ticket for standing there. I said, why? Well, the city, the city council's going to pass a law that all the, the people riding the bus have to be against the building. I said, oh, there's smoke over there. I don't like smoke. Yeah. Well, this girl there, They're gonna have a hell of a time with the me. sidewalk has to be open for the visitors down there. I mean, this city oh is just my like, God. what visitors? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, just insanity. Yeah. And that, I would like to try to reverse some of the laws that our local city government has brought in because of the 9 or 12 or 15 of them plus a man or whatever goes, yeah, let's. And then they do stupid things. Oh, that's my yeah. decision. Uh, How about the stupid law uh, where you need to have a college degree or figure out how to do parking meters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't help. That doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> In the cold. 20 below. Yeah. It's poorly. Yeah, they do that.
that just to get extra money out of you. I'm convinced. I still uh, they've actually they've done it because people have figured out a way to get over the older meter. Yeah. It's like I've done it. My I've done it down at the U. You put the quarter in, you stick it in there. And it will go out of order so long as the quarter doesn't go drop all the way into the machine. And they, they install these. <laughs> in, 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 when they hit the first Many time times I've had a free parking spot that way, and it's like, and so that's where they're oh. the way to beat it. They put it. They installed those maybe during the biggest, you know, economic decline. Yeah. So, you know. <coughs> Turn it up. All right. Um, well, so we have uh, three points of discussion. Um, Potentially, and then we were, our goal was to around 8:20, which is like 50 minutes from now, maybe sooner. Um, switch over to the video. Um, so we have uh, I, I put up reoccupying this summer, or maybe you know maybe not like a big long-term thing, but that was an idea that sort of been noodled around here. Just I felt that should maybe on the potential list. We have OWS principles of solidarity. <coughs> Um, we also have the point about uh, hosting a debate. So maybe let's do a temperature check. I mean, um, do, people want to, do people feel like you want to talk about all three of these things? Or maybe like maybe the debate thing could spin off to the side? Or I, I don't know. What would people like to see at this point? I already agreed on the debate. Um, what are people, which topic do people feel the most like strongly about talking about? Oh. Uh, Brian? I am so sorry. I was supposed to make an announcement, and I totally forgot. That's cool. Can I do that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you all for forgiving me. Um, we are really short on street medics, and Kat has agreed to teach another street medic course. So please go to uh, the experimental Expo TC and sign up for it. And if enough people sign up for it, she will actually teach it, even though she's back working full time and she's going to school and she's got the baby. But she just wants people to sign up first. It's going to be on July the 12th, 13th, and 14th. The way she usually does it is the first day, <coughs> Friday, and the session is sort of late afternoon. So if you're working, you can make it. If you can't, I'll take notes for you. <laughs> <laughs> and when enough people sign up at the experimental college, then she'll find a place for it. She always finds a place that somewhere like around Pennsylvania. So we really, 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 really need more street medics. You know, people have moved away and, and stuff like that. You don't need any previous medical experience at all. We need you. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Originally, street medics were for things like marches and riots and such like that where the cops won't let the ambulances in. And, you know, the ambulance people's safety, supposedly, but, you know, that's where all the heads get beaten, and that's where people need all the emergent medical care like that. Kid Scott Olson, you know, who got bashed in Oakland, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we've sort of more since then. We do that. Um, street medics were down at the Monsanto March. Unfortunately, there weren't enough of us. I, State to site and put them on the other street medics marched along. But, anyways, um, okay, marches and things like that, encampments, um, any sort of radical activity for it. So, okay, maybe you wouldn't want the government. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, like Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> and we do all sorts of things. When we were in camp <coughs> at the People's Plaza, you could not believe the people I took care of who had chronic things that were just totally disenfranchised for the system. And I was able to help them figure out how to get medical care for things like French foot and, you know. Um, we all learned a lot about hypothermia because we stayed there in the cold and, yeah. Training, uh, Exco T, it's E X C O T C. So that's Experimental College of the Twin Cities, XcoTC.org. It's a uh, it's a free college that was started up around like the U of M and McAllister to provide like free classes because um, an assistant for people to sign up for free classes because education is so expensive. So Exco has been going on for a few years. They're doing real well, and it's great that it's happening through that. Also, like I've seen a lot of medics like say people that are disoriented or tear gas and they lock in their eyes to get the yeah. tear gas out and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, we do a lot of that. 
in Chicago where people got beat on the head by the cops. And they were rightly afraid to go to the hospitals because most of the hospitals had working cops, both outside and inside. And if it looked like you'd been out demonstrating, the good old days. they'd arrest you. Right. And like the house where we were staying in Chicago, we had an informal concussion ward at the house. These street medics did, you know. And So you guys are like talking about like reoccupying the plaza this year? Uh, well, oh, it's well, an well, idea. One more thing about the medic training is free. Yeah. And always in the past, we've been able to give out people a little starter street medic kit. Oh, cool. Um, well, uh, the reoccupation idea, I mean, it's something that people have kind of raised in the margins of, of these meetings, but we haven't exactly had a systematic discussion about it. And I think it's a good idea to throw out there. Okay. So I think that that would be a good idea. So um, anyway, yeah, so we got, we're trying to do about 45 minutes, like switch over to the movie. So what, what would people like to talk about? And also like maybe trying to find a time for this debate as well. Those are the three ideas. Do you want to go through each topic and people raise their hands? Yeah, yeah sure. Maybe let's just do a couple of go rounds about the principle of solidarity, then do reoccupying, and then the debate, and then the movie. Is that cool? Okay. All right. So, Odebia's principle of solidarity. Do you know who wrote this up? Was that you? It was me. All right. You want to lead this off? Oh, so I mentioned the top five. Put it on the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I thought it really was good. Hold on. Hold on. Sorry, no. Um, I just, you know, it's come to my attention there's been a, a few things that have come up that. Um, what I'm concerned about that made me realize that maybe there are people um, that have become part of our group that aren't aware of some of the fundamental principles of solidarity that uh, apply to people that are in support of Occupy Wall Street. And so I, made a, I, I copied this handoff uh, out for everybody. You can pass these around. This is from uh, the NCGA website, and it didn't print very well, so I'm kind of I'm sorry about that. But I'd just like to briefly go over a couple of things on here, and then maybe set aside some time, a couple of times in the future, that we could keep coming back to these and bring <coughs> up experience and knowledge and discuss some of these things individually rather than having a huge discussion about all of them. But one of the things that somebody uh, mentioned to me one day that really disturbed me was that um, it didn't feel comfortable around several people who like to wear masks at some of the actions and marches and that they were afraid of those people and didn't want to be part of a group of which they were in. And, and these were just people that covering their face up with you know, a cotton scarf and, and things like that. And while that seems benign to a lot of people, there are people who are very afraid of that, but uh, the sanctity of individual privacy is one of the items that is listed as one of the basic principles of solidarity. And um, it sounds really benign, but it, it, this began to become sort of a divisive issue in one of our groups, that people did not want to be part of people who they perceived wearing a mask, they were often tagged, and, some people's minds as becoming, as being, oh, oh, well, they must be anonymous. They've got a Guy Fox mask on. Well, that's, you know, they probably just have a Guy Fox mask on. They might just have a cotton mask on. But that we should respect people for this and realize that they have a right to protect their personal privacy and, and not single them out for, do, for doing that. And I've been one of those people. Everybody here knows I don't like my email address shared. Um, I want my personal contact information to be kept private. If I give it to you, I don't want anybody else giving it to anybody else. And, um, yeah, yeah, I think. That it's I just have a question about the uh, the thing with masks. My understanding is that if you're just wearing a mask, it really has nothing to be afraid of. <clears throat> but I think that can kind of be confused in certain cases with demonstrations and protesting where people are wearing masks for a specific reason. So they can basically create chaos and then still remain anonymous while basically breaking things, whatever it is. Occupy Oakland comes to mind. A lot of people in the Occupy Oakland movement are much more militant than this group, obviously, and have worn masks simply for that task to basically be illegal and to do things that are probably outside of the norm for occupiers. But 
to tell you the truth, I'll be personal about it and say that I actually respect the Occupy Oakland movement. They've done a lot. They've closed down things like majorly and have created a lot of like good media for the movement. Now, I don't think everybody should basically be agreeable to the idea of violence, but I think that what they've done essentially is they've created a, enough scare tactics to create the media that they want. And so I think that kind of gets messed up with the idea of people not wanting to be a part of this group if they see somebody wearing a mask. Well, they need to do that with the court. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Um, yeah, let's try to do, uh, let's actually try to go around maybe this way with stack. Yeah. So, so if we can maybe go around with people. <coughs> um, so does anybody over here want to talk? Right, we'll go to Chuck. Well, no, I, oh, I thought the anonymous guys were part of the original structure of Wall Street. Yeah. All right? Definitely. Well, then it's pretty hard to see. <laughs> oh, they've been around a lot longer. Yeah, a lot longer. Um, yeah. And there have been guys wearing those masks as far as the uh, at Wall some Street. of our marches. Not that they too. started. And as a matter of fact, I almost bought one because I thought it was cool. I like them. Yeah. Cool to, to wear it to church. I was just wondering if we wanted to, I don't know if Jeanette was finished or if we wanted to have you talk about anything you wanted to say, and then maybe do it. No, I'm sorry. I just want to get a word in before we affect it. Okay, let's do Mary Lynch. Um... I thought people wore masks because they don't want the government to know they're out doing this because the government already hates them or something. Yeah. But uh, yes, you're um, back home in the Quad Cities, this issue split Occupy in half and it disintegrated because some of the founders of the group love their Guy Fox masks. And if anybody doesn't know what it's about, you need to watch V for Vendetta. Yeah. There are two segments in that movie that are epic. Mm -hmm. And that's why that was picked as the logo for Anonymous, because it was so meaningful. Actually, that's incorrect. Oh. <laughs> it, was, um, it, was used, uh, it was used during Chanology, actually, to prevent <coughs> the Scientologists that Anonymous was protesting from learning their IDs due to the Scientology's Fair Game Act. But the V for Vendetta mask has a lot of meaning to it. It's not just It does mask. now, but yeah. that wasn't. We called it Epic Fail Guy. <laughs> because it's a meme on 4chan. It's, it's a cool. I'm so well, There's a, a meme backstory <laughs> behind it. Iconography. Um, anyway, so I'm sorry. One last yeah, point yeah, is sure. the reason, another good reason to wear it is every time you step out in public, there's facial recognition software. Exactly. It's just a fact. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so, Jan? Yeah. I think, I think it would be good every once in a while if everybody would wear a mask and then we'd have to listen to each other more. You know, you'd actually, you'd actually have, you know, I mean, seriously, <laughs> of course it wouldn't work because we'd recognize uh, voices, but um, there's also the fact that there are infiltrators who wear masks so that they're not detected and, you know, what can I say, we can't ever stop thinking and, you know, you know just feeling out every situation, and I think Occupy really needs to talk about infiltrators and uh, and see some movies better this world and informant <laughs> gotta get those films over here because I think they're really important for people to see because I think we can deal with that kind of <coughs> okay let's do Dan and then Nathan yeah. then we'll come back now. I think the uh, the disagreements and splits around masks is oftentimes a uh, a mask for a different disagreement which is about illegal activity or direct action or violence uh, first of all, I don't think that breaking a window is violent. Window glass feels no pain, feels no fear. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, we, we should reserve the word violence for something more than breaking a window or it becomes <coughs> meaningless. But nevertheless, that, this is a stand-in very often for that argument. And I think one of the critical things about Occupy is the willingness, not always, but to engage in direct action because one of the things we have learned, if we didn't know it before we joined Occupy, is that every possible effective avenue for change will be made illegal. <laughs> you know, you can watch it down there at People's Plaza, step by step by step, you know, and it happens everywhere else. And so that if we draw the line ahead of time and say, we aren't going to do anything illegal, we aren't going to do anything where we want to hide our identity because of the fear of the law, we have 
you know, basically acknowledge that we aren't going to step out of line. Uh, Nathan? Yeah, uh, I'm uncomfortable with this video camera. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, just like, where a damn no, mask? No, no. <laughs> I know how you feel, Nathan. I'm uncomfortable with it pointing you know, at me all the time. I, I do, so. I do politics for yeah. a living, and right. you know, I'd like to yeah. be able to say things here that I wouldn't. No, uh, yeah, that wouldn't ruin just, my career. Um, no, we know. No, thank yeah. you. Go ahead. Yes. No, but um, I don't think there's any. I don't. I don't think we have pro privacy, whether you wear a mask or not. Yep. You know, I think if like. <clears throat> Worst case scenario, the CIA wants to know who, who this guy in a mask is. They will find out. Oh, yeah. You know, they will they'll follow you all the way until you take the mask off. Uh, I'm freaked <coughs> out by you know I'm freaked out by a lot of shit. Uh, you know, it's my freaky. email, my Twitter, everything's been hacked. Uh, about, you know, by you know all my shit has been hacked. Um, it's kind of freaky, and the the filming of it, I understand it on the one hand. On the other hand, it, uh, it's. It feels unsafe in a way, but and it limits what I want to say. So okay. we can always shut the mic off sometimes too. We we aren't trying to like make people feel uncomfortable yeah. with the camera. We just want to be able to bring in a wider circle of people yeah. who can't make it down there. Yeah, so, I get that. Um, real fast thing, and then we'll yeah. Keep uh, this is just speaking of the whole camera situation. I was going to say if we're going to discuss reoccupying, maybe we should do that. Uh, <laughs> just yeah. so people <laughs> watching don't know where or when or how or. <coughs> Yeah, yeah. I just want to say thanks to the, you know Dave, yeah, for bringing that point out about them making everything illegal. And I just want to point out that the, this principle of solidarity it doesn't really mention any specifics. It just says that it says the sanctity of individual privacy. <coughs> that for whatever reason, each individual has a right to their privacy, and I think that uh, that is a very simple thing. Although it's complicated because, you know, for instance, uh, the fact that he brought up Oakland. Oakland got a black eye. I call it Oakland's black eye. And um, they have a right to be whatever they wanted to be and do what they wanted to do in Oakland. And there, there is a, a growing number of people or, that were there before or have are there now and within our group who don't like the idea that there are anarchists in our group. And I, and I want to speak directly to this issue of, of anarchy because um, they tend to, if you put a mask on, then they say you're an anarchist. But anarchists have been a part of the Occupy Wall Street movement and they are a vital group um, of, you know, just oh, like any right. other group of individuals with individual beliefs have been parts of this group. And you know, it's time that we not vilify them, whether they're in Oakland or anywhere else. And that's that's kind of what I think we need to talk about this more often and bring it back because it's just it's a reappeared again. So yep. um, and then there's these other principles on here, you know, that I'd, I'd like to discuss at some time. One being, you know, making technologies and knowledge and culture open and freely accessible. <coughs> like Deanna's talking about we live stream so other people can be here because we're privileged that we could even come here. We don't have physical disabilities that limit us from arriving at this point. No. And we need to, at all, you know, at all junctures, try to make this process open so that people can not just come and see what we're doing, but they can contribute what they have to offer, which is extremely valuable. They have things that they have to offer to make our movement better, and, and we can try to facilitate that so they can, we can bring them in. Um, and then um, this other issue on here on the handout about recognizing inherent privilege, that's a big conversation I think that we need to return to again. Uh, it's the reason why, one of the things is, is the reason why you will never see me facilitate a meeting. I will not do it. <laughs> so why did you facilitate a meeting? <laughs> but, uh, um, so I'd like to have these conversations, specifically this uh, recognizing individuals' inherent privilege and, and how that, uh, that plays into the formation of groups and getting things done, the sanctity of individual privacy, how we can protect that and value it and help others as they come in and learn how to, you know, why we do that and why we value it and uh, have more teach-ins about technology and build some tools. And, 
not just have the Twitter and, and yeah. We, we've got to. Totally. Because then we can't do these other, it makes it possible to do all these other things we talked about here. Reoccupying everything becomes easier. Enabling. Yeah. It's, uh, did you have anything, Karen? Me? I didn't see it. I don't know if I saw it. <laughs> no, I, oh, sorry. I apologize for coming in late, but cool. I wanted to get in before I leave. Oh, no, you'll have to leave. Um, I just want to <laughs> mention while I can that it's not just the government that likes to watch activists, it's also corporations. And we know mm -hmm. that people like Enbridge or Freddie <laughs> Mac, they all have their own enemies <laughs> that people they like to get Sometimes at. Sometimes they're they, scarier. Yeah, and they're, yeah. and they're creepier. They don't have the same sense of limitations that certain law enforcement does. Um, and we know that uh, they use something called strategic lawsuits against public participation, or SLAPs, to try to, <laughs> to, try to shut down SLAPs, slap, to, to, like to try one. to shut down activist organizations. So you need careful activist lawyers when you have things like Tar Sands blockade. They got sucked into a weaker position regarding SLAPs, um, and that kind of caused them to get frozen up. So what they do is they'll hire private investigators that run around photographing people so they can find the names, legal names, to send slaps to serve people. And that's like a whole other thing going on. And that's another reason why you need to have activist privacy and encrypt your chats and stuff like that. But um, anyway, I just want to mention that. That's why you never have leaders. Bingo. Um, any chairs over here? Over here. All right, we're slowly working our way back. I think you're up next. Um, on the point that Gillette made about the um, importance of having live streaming and getting other people included, the cameras are down here. That was like a huge factor when we were on the plaza. Mm -hmm. All the support from people that couldn't come down was just phenomenal. Like, we had so many people getting us pizzas. We, we even got like some fan mail when we put a call out for that, which was awesome. <laughs> uh, they delivered a letter to our uh, plaza, and they just left it under this pavilion that we had, which was Keep it pointed over there. There's other reasons for wearing masks. This is about the economic intimidation back in the day when I was young and dinosaurs were in the air. Tuition at public universities in relation to wages was incredibly less than it is now. And maybe graduate with a little bit, maybe go to a part time job and put yourself through school, but it isn't like it is now. Graduate from school now. They have an important decision in front of them whether they're going to default on their loans or whether they're going to be a wage slave for the next 20 or 30 years. So, for those people, you know, you brought that up, but, and myself as a, a member of a profession that has a strong, extremely conservative streak, I've got a good reason for covering my face sometimes if I ever want a job. And some people don't want the boss seeing their face on the front page of the paper just marching for something fairly innocuous. It doesn't mean that, <coughs> God forbid, you're going to kill a piece of glass and then it's going to even have babies. <laughs> <laughs> You mean we didn't have to do that? Thank you, Dan Fight, for all the work that you do in educating people. And yeah. and um try to do trainings. And yeah, yeah and the, the pirate party is pretty cool. I don't know if anybody knows about that, but Oh yeah, yeah, you were announcing that. Yeah. What is the next meeting? That's a good question. I'm not sure, actually. Um, all right, was anybody, anybody else over here? Um, 
Incidentally, the reason that tuition is so high at the University of Minnesota is because of breaking the law. If you, if you check Section 12 of the Minnesota <coughs> Charter, you will find it says that tuition shall be free for in-state residents. Really? And they, broke, they break that law by raising the tuition so that only foreign students with sheeps as daddy yeah. afford to go. There's a wicked thing. Yeah. When I went to the university. So all you have to do is get the university to, to go along with the law. We became a state because that law was on the books. That was one of the provisions of Minnesota becoming a state. And tuition should be free again. This was part of Reaganomics. Reagan jacked up all the tuition for Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you want to say anything else? Uh, yeah, I guess. All right, cool. Then we'll just, just do like one last go around and then get to reoccupying. Does that sound good? Yeah. All right. Couldn't there be a lawsuit against the universities for charging people money? <laughs> yes. You think? Yes. The court's <laughs> corrupt. <laughs> yeah, the courts are corrupt. 50,000 students could get in on it. All right. On that topic, I heard that Dayton is uh, interested in pursuing some action against the U of M right now. Yeah. And uh, pressuring him to really go at them might be a good option. Mm -hmm. I've emailed him. <laughs> cool. Um, anybody else over here? Yeah. I just want to sort of throw this out for everybody who's listening, because I know how I feel, but anyway, um, <coughs> so dirty. Yeah, okay, but what about those people, and there's no need for me to get personally name their names, and those organizations, Whoa. and there's no need for me to name their names. Um, point being, that at some point, we do have to draw the line, the line, draw the line, on who we're in solidarity with, and how do we deal with that issue, and then people that wind up on the other side of the line, squawk and scream, that we're not being in solidarity with. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, the answer no, to that not is a clue. Just, th this represents consensus. <laughs> As long as we, the group stays to the common consensus, they'll be. It's a lot easier to have solidarity. Um, uh, Dave. Yeah, coming back just a little bit, I think you know we sometimes underestimate the level of fear in our society today, and there's there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, I went to college back in the '60s. We rioted in the streets against the Vietnam War. When the cops attacked us, we fought back. And you know, did all kinds of things that you know, if it were now, I might be getting out of jail about at this point. Um, you know, I mean, this is seriously. You know, now they teach you in nonviolence training to keep your hands in your pockets because if the cop touches your hand, you can be arrested for assault against him. You know, it's it's getting yeah. ridiculous, and the the charges that are gone after people. You know, I mean. My daughter didn't do anything that I didn't do when she was charged with uh, conspiracy to riot and furtherance of terrorism. And this is, this is insane. I had two years of her life screwed up with that. So there's a real fear there on that level, but on a more subtle level. There's the fear when we were in college, we knew we could do all that stuff. And when we got out, no one would know that we had. We didn't have Facebook. We didn't have Google. You know, I mean, people now... Boy, employers always Google on your name and it comes up. Yeah. And we, we wonder sometimes why the youth of today and the college students aren't you know, active to the extent that they were during the 60s. And I think a lot of it has to do with that, that you must get a job afterwards to pay off that damn debt. I mean, we didn't have much debt at all. And I mean, we were poor as church mice during the time we were in college, I think more so than kids are now. But we didn't have debt afterwards. And that fear of what you know somebody's going to know about this in the future it's easy for me i never i'm never going to have to apply for a job again for the rest of my life you know and that makes it easy but i think a lot of people aren't even aware of their own level of fear you know <clears throat> something's going on down at the plaza well you know the weather's not real good or i don't quite feel like it or whatever else and the real reason is they're scared 
And, and I, I don't think people have even dealt with that inside themselves. Totally. All right, so. Okay, so you talk about this? Yeah. In paper. The mask issue, um, yeah. I would say this. The advantage of covering faces and everybody doing it is then we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And part of what's happening in our culture of fear is they're trying to differentiate everybody and have people compare each other's and just separate and point out differences. Divide. And when we're functioning as a cohesive group, we're, our, we're coming together with our similarities and we're setting aside our differences. And we're saying we have a belief system that we want to bring change. And they're trying to make us separate and point out why each of us are different and we're not the same and why it wouldn't work for you or it wouldn't work for you. So the mask issue to me has some merit when you're trying to come across as being all the same. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a Guy Fox mask, it could be something else, but it's it's no different than when you're in a uniform or something, you're standing, you're physically in solidarity, as opposed to being different. Um, it's no different than we've worn, in, in Zakati we had days we wore a certain color, and it was, it was standing together wearing that same color. Um, Go ahead. On the, um, this issue in particular, you may or may not know, this is rather dated. We wrote this in the first two weeks we were in Zakati. Um, there is a group, if you aren't aware of this, a national strategy group that has been meeting since January after all the evictions. And I am a member of it, and if you want to get on it, you certainly can. Uh, the Interoccupy website is the host for it. Um, and it's a pretty large listserv. And it ranges from 20 to 80 people that are really active, and it's about 600 people. It's international in scope, and right now we are in the midst of rewriting the Occupy vision. I believe I have one copy in my bag. I think I've handed it out before. I probably neglected to give it to Polly to send it. But it's a draft. It's two pages, and it's trying to identify what we believe we're shooting for as a vision. And um, our goal is to try to have a strategic plan written as a draft to bring to the national gathering, which is in Kalamazoo, Michigan, August 21 through 26. Um, and the reason for that is we're seeing that we have to have some agreement on what we want, but we have to start working together on strategy. Uh, and no different than the Monsanto march Saturday, it was an international march. It had We've already talked about it. So it had much bigger impact because so many groups across the world were doing it. And so we're coming from the perspective that there's that power in the numbers. So I'm expecting this will shift and change. Um, but I wanted to at least let you know there's a group. We would love to have all your wonderful ideas and energy participating. Because it's, we have no ownership. We're trying to put something together so that Occupy Post Encampment can still be going for the world we all want. What change. is the name of the list service? Interoccupy, Inter and it's national, okay. and it's national strategy. That's a national strategy? It's called national strategy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and Can and you that's give that's that to Polly? Yes, I yeah. can. And the uh, two-page. Yes, and I apologize, because I think I've talked about it before. Sure. I, I just want to mention on a technical note, interoccupy.net, everyone uses a, a video versus I think I have a voice copy. chat software called Mumble. Oh, wait. We had a little training earlier about how to install <laughs> Mumble on your computer. It's a free thing. It's like a free alternative to Skype. You can get together, and it's very handy to have you know voice voice and te uh, text chat meetings for stuff like that. So interoccupy.net hosts uh, a lot of different groups that meet like that. I just want to mention that on technical. I'll pass it around. I have one copy of the current draft. It's not the strategic plan, but it's the vision, and you can. And I will get it to Polly, but I'll pass it around so people can. All right, so we'll go. All right, so I think to tie this out, we'll go with Leah, and then you had your hand up too, yeah. and then let's get to reoccupying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that the two things are, are kind of at odds with each other about it's okay to wear a mask at a protest, but yet we're going to videotape every word you say, and you don't get a choice about that. Um, people have, mute people the have a microphone yeah. if you it's want. It's so wide that if Gabe decides to say something, my face is going to be on it. And I know yeah. at least two people off, off the top of my head who would come to things if, if they were able to be more anonymous, but won't be able to come here if they are going to be identified as associating with certain
certain things that are against this or against that. Um, so I'm just, I'm just questioning. And then there was another woman here at one of the meetings who had a video camera who was doing something for a TV show that she wanted to do. And then I was just like, I don't know how you're going to do the footage of what I just said. And then I have enough. I, I have social anxiety around speaking anything out loud. And then and when I'm talking about something really important that I should sound very knowledgeable about, I, I get really stage fright, maybe. I don't know. But it seems like a bigger deal than just this circle. And so um, I just wonder about some of the costs and the, the benefit of, of having people who might not be able to come here being able to see it. Can they just read the report or hear it, or hear it audio? Or hear it out. Just, just wanted to bring those up. Um, yeah, I mean, okay. Okay. Let's, do, let's, keep, let's keep going around then. Let's get some more thoughts. Uh, YouTube, and then we'll go to just a thought, okay? If you think that you're not being videotaped and recorded with that turned off, you're dreaming. It's not true, okay? You're being watched every fucking moment of the day in your house, in your bed, when you take a shit, okay? No, everybody is. Your voice, when you, when you speak on the phone, it's going to record. And it's going into a massive supercomputer with massive artificial intelligence. And when they want to look at you, they can pull every phone call, every record you have ever made, every place you've ever, every store you've ever been in, every private video system is tapped by the NSA on Earth. That's what they do. In the 50s, they had entire underground cities where the people living there couldn't even leave of supercomputers tapping every domestic communication, every piece of electronics, every cell phone is a node on the network. Every camera on your computer, on your cell phone, every microphone could be turned on without your awareness, even if you can't, if it's off. If, if you think there, there, you have to, you have, it, it is a dream to think that you can live in the United States and not be not under 24 hour surveillance. It's just, but that was, that was 30 years ago. Okay, now we're talking today. Now, I'm just being realistic. No, they've got cameras on every street you're corner. Being watched all the time, or realize you are, but you are. Okay. Sure. I just want to say one yeah. last thing about this, and I'll actually say something to what he said. Since 9 11, there's like 300 million more cameras in the United States. It's like you walk home from here, and they're going to know it. It's like, that's just the they're way it is. Right hello, but, fuck you. I, but I would say this, I mean, there's people, obviously, like Nathan, who said that, you know, he's got a political <laughs> career, and I respect that. Mm -hmm. But the only thing I wanted to say to kind of cap this whole thing off, I'm old school, I'm like Abby Hoffman. You know, I don't care what who people see me. I'm a guardian for the state of Minnesota, and I have to protect that. But I've been in, like, I've sat in courtrooms with judges and then screamed at them because they don't understand what I go through with my brother all the time. And I've survived it simply because I'm not going to be put away by, by this system. And that's what I mean by being here. So I don't care if this is looking at me, although I don't, I kind of look like an older. <laughs> that's not necessarily See myself thing. on like YouTube and everything. <clears throat> but I just want to say to the younger group, when I first started this, um, when I first started seeing this movement, um, I was on Facebook and I'm a troller on Facebook. I like to start <laughs> you know, all the time. And I went to like, I went to Occupy Minnesota, I went to Occupy Minneapolis, and I even went to Occupy Wall Street. And I just started putting up like uh, pieces of the book, Steal This Book by Abby Hoffman, because that's actually what's gonna get attention, that's actually what's gonna change things. That's what basically started this country on the right path. So for those who people who wanna basically wear the mask, I respect them because that's what Abby Hoffman did. You know, Abby Hoffman even went, so, went further and to get, so the media, because it was back in the 60s, you know, the media didn't like to basically put anything on them. They couldn't block things out. So you know what he would do every day? He'd write fuck on his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay. Then the media couldn't follow him for most of the day. Times have changed, obviously, and so it's like all this privacy discussion, it's really just, it's nonsense when you get down to it because more and more people are gonna basically know about the movement, and that's really more important than your anonymous you know, nature. Of the group. Um, I just um, we have about ten ish minutes until okay. we want to watch the film. So. <laughs>
really hoping we can actually touch on reoccupying. I'm definitely, if everyone wants to say they're a bit quick, I think that's cool, but let's try to move ahead. Yeah, I just, about the whole, you know, staying anonymous thing, like, I, I used to take great strides in, in doing that. I mean, now I see it more of kind of a statement to wear a mask. Like, during the NATO protests, I had revolution over my face. You know, at the May Day parade, I had, you know, the pipeline fighter thing. You know, I just want to make it a statement. And as far as privacy goes and, like, staying anonymous and all that, like, I just don't give a crap anymore. You know, I, I spend every night on the plaza. What, am I going to cover my face the whole time? You know? Uh, I walked in, I, I'm dealing with some stuff over my passport today. I was in the federal building with this laptop, you know, sitting right next to me while I'm filling out paperwork and everything. And I'm showing them my IDs and I have a little anonymous ID in my pocket and they saw that too and they're just chuckling. It's like big deal. And I'm applying for my passport and getting all this taken care of. So I, I just, uh, I think it's a personal choice. You know, if you don't mind it, you don't mind it. If you do, have some respect. How much did it cost to leave the country by buying a about two, uh, let's, right. 200 bucks plus travel. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, yeah. and by the way, don't put that up. Yeah, um, I'm just turning it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm resigned to the fact that the CIA, the FBI, blah, 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 all those, all those people can watch me. They can get in my phone, whatever. Um, but why add to it? You know, I think Malia makes a good point. Um, this is a legal record for any, any, any Yahoo wants to uh, record me, to build a legal case. And my last point is, we can't afford to forget that the National Defense Authorization Act is in play. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know whether they're tracking everything that we do. Uh, we don't know how, but there are there are rules. There are still laws um, on how the government can use information against you. But there are, but there aren't laws against how how any any Joe off the street could pull a quote off this and call it, call anybody a terrorist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've I've heard things said in this room that could be construed that way. Sorry. Uh, no, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, like, I think, I think everybody in this country has to act like a lawyer. You have to think like an attorney, because that's that's the reality of the society that we live in today. Totally. Point well taken. This is my last statement. The point I was making about individual privacy, you know. Nice to try and talk people out of their beliefs, but if people like Malia want their privacy protected, uh, it is up to us to uphold the sanctity of individual privacy and try and make accommodations at all possible points to respect I agree. individual right to have their privacy. And I think we should start doing that more in this group. The bandana policy. Uh, yeah, Mike. <laughs> Speaking of terrorism. Um, I was, look, you guys, look, here, here's the, for me is the bottom line. See, we're looking at, at the problem of, you know, knowing that the state is looking at us. They're, they're looking at us, but it's just the way it is. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of hope. And by the way, fuck you and the filthy bastards incorporated in the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that on the phone all the fucking time. I was raised in Northern Ireland, okay? Northern Ireland, just so, just so you all know, for those who don't know, this whole idea of state-sponsored spying on us was fucking perfected in Northern Ireland. No. It was fucking perfected there. The British government did it. They did it to us, right? As a people, as as a as, as a movement. And guess what? <coughs> that movement still went on. That movement still went on. We find a way. Those of us who are resisting, either resisting, either whatever way it is that you're resisting, resistance always finds a way. That's my hope for you. Is that. Fuck, fuck the government, what they're doing, what they're saying, what they're thinking. I don't give a fuck what they're saying, what they're thinking. We can do it. And resistance will find a way. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah. I think you're the last one. Yeah. Um, with the surveillance, they're always going to be surveilling us. Like, it's a scare tactic they used to try to control us. Thank you. Right up. Thank you. Thank you. If we stand together and we watch each other's backs, yeah. if they do something, we can try to counter that. And as far as the cell phone goes, just cover your like camera phone with a piece of tape. Nobody <laughs> can't see it. Take the battery out. Take the battery out. Cool. All right. Well, we'll let's take, um, let's yes. take a little while to uh, turn to talk about reoccupying. Do also, we want live stream for that or no? Video we concerns. Can we take a temp check on on having live stream for that. Uh, yeah, we could shut it off. I guess. What do you say? Anyway. Should we temp check for a reoccupy discussion? Should we keep oh, live streaming on or off? Wait, what's the question? Turn it off. The temp check yeah. question is like, go like this if you'd like to shut off the live stream for like the next 
for tonight, basically, while we talk about reoccupying. Quote this if you don't. So this if you don't care. So if you want it off, raise your hands up high. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty clear that I guess like we're feeling that in that comfort zone. I just wanted to add, like, you can always shut the audio off, and the video is at kind of a low resolution. It's not intended to be super sharp, but we can always shut the audio off. And I'll try to make a much better, like, I've been cutting corners about making announcements about that at the beginning of meetings. I think that would be a good idea. So with that, I think we've decided we would like to shut off the, the video system. So that at least that, is this going to identify you every bit as much as video? Well, no, no, shut it off. I'm saying we're going to stop the transmission now. So Sorry. Good night, anyway, everyone. If you want to hit the button <laughs> on the bottom of the screen there, then um, which, which we'll uh, wave goodbye to whoever was watching it. Yeah, which, uh, what, what do I do here? Yeah, just, just hit stop at the bottom. So, um, yeah. Stop. All right, so folks, um, I guess we should, like, we don't have a ton of time.